Chapter 9, Selecting and Grouping. MicroStation has several tools that allow multiple elements to be selected and grouped together. These include the Element Selection tool, the Fences tool, Select by Attributes, and Grouping Elements. To this point, any modifications and manipulations have been performed on single elements. When working with actual drawings, this is often not practical. A more common task is to modify or manipulate a group of elements. For instance, all direction arrows may need to be erased, or an area of the drawing may need to be moved or copied to a new location. MicroStation has several tools that allow multiple elements to be selected. The next several topics cover various ways of selecting multiple objects in MicroStation. We already discussed briefly the element selection tool. I'd like to go through and talk a little bit more about it and demonstrate some of the functionality of the element selection tool. I'm going to draw just a bunch of lines. Okay, bunch of random lines. As I discussed earlier, this is the element selection tool. It is formerly the power selector. You can select individual elements in the individual element selection mode. If I were to toggle the plus sign, this adds elements to the selection group sequentially. It will not allow me to remove those elements. It is just adding new elements. If I select the subtract option, I can remove elements from the selection set, but it will not let me add. Right? If I select invert, it allows me to toggle whether something is selected. It inverts those elements in and out of the selection set. This is now the clear option. If I click clear, it clears the selection set. All of these options can be used to, to some degree with these different options up here. So I showed you single select. You can drag a box if you drag a box, only the elements that are completely inside the box are selected if you draw it from left to right. If you draw it from right to left, any element that crosses the box will be selected. That's essentially what happens when you select this tool, the block tool, except you can enter individual points. I'm clicking once data point, dragging, clicking a second time for a data point. The shape option lets you draw a shape. And you saw I drew it this way. If I draw it this way, only elements that are inside the shape get selected. Circle and reverse. Right. Clicking either reset or the data point to start again will clear your selection set. The line tool selects anything that the line crosses. This can be useful for say deleting pattern lines. If there's a group of pattern lines in your cross-section drawing that you'd like to delete all at once, just striking a line across those pattern lines will allow you to delete them. Not only that, but you can select what levels things are on. And of course, this is only going to show you the levels that are currently passing the standard level filter if the standard level filter is active. You can then select by element color. See, I've selected by element color now. And it selected everything that's yellow, color number four in this drawing. So I'm going to go over here, and it shows me all of the levels that are being used. If I unselect those geopack levels, now it only has the curve back, curve face. So you see this works a little bit like that uh, select by attributes tool, except in real time and not so much like a uh, element selection search tool. Another thing you'll notice on the element selection tool is this option right here. This is disable handles. 
you notice these little blue squares? These are the element selection handles or manipulation handles. Whenever you select an element, they appear. And that's only for elements that are in the active design file. If it's a reference file, you won't see those handles. This is in a reference file, and you see you don't see those selection handles. If I were to click the Disable Handles button, you notice those handles do not appear. We already talked about deleting fence contents, and only briefly talked about what a fence is. Fences are a semi-permanent selection set. I enter a data point for the beginning of the fence and an end point. This is a block fence. Just like the element selector tool, you can have a shape fence that you draw, a circle fence, or define a fence by an element from the view, from the entire file, or by flooding a region. Right now my fence mode is set to clip. Typically the default fence mode is inside. Inside means that all of these elements are selected by the fence for whatever we do to the fence. This means all elements in the fence and overlapping the fence are selected. Maybe it would help if I drew a fence that overlapped some of those elements. We've got some elements that are completely inside the fence, an element that crosses the fence, and an element outside the fence. So inside means these five elements are selected. Overlap means these six elements are selected, including the one that overlaps. Clip means all these elements are selected except the one that is outside. This only selects the portion of that element that is inside the fence for manipulation. Void means everything outside is selected, so well actually everything in this drawing is selected, including this element and but not this, because this is not outside the fence. Void overlap means everything is selected, including things that cross, or sorry, everything outside the fence is selected, including things that cross the fence. So this is selected as being outside the fence. And void clip means everything outside the fence is selected, including this portion of this element, but not this portion of the element that's inside the fence. You can save fences. You can create a named fence that is stored in the drawing. And then, of course, make the fence, as soon as you click off, it disappears, but you double click it again, and it'll show up again. You can get rid of a fence either by clicking on the fence tool icon or by just clicking the element selector in the screen. And you'll notice some of the modify and manipulation tools have an option to check a box to use fence. And that's where you'd be able to use those tools if there was a fence. You would make a fence, check the box for fence, and then use the tool on the contents of the fence. So that way you're modifying more than one element at once. Whether it's moving or copying or scaling or rotating, it applies to the contents of the fence as defined by the fence mode. And there are tools for that. There's modify fence, so if you draw a fence, you can change the fence. Manipulate fence contents is a selection of manipulate tools that don't appear unless you have a fence, so let's place a fence. Oops. Manipulate fence contents are a selection of tools just like the copy, move, scale, rotate, already with the fence mode active. And you can, of course, select the different fence modes right there in the dialog. And you see, as I select the different tools in that, the tool settings change. They work just like the manipulate tools, except specifically for fences. Drop fence contents, that would apply whatever drop settings you have uh, for changing complex elements. And copy move fence to file will allow you to send the contents of a fence to a new file. It's the old uh, file fence command, if you're familiar with that old command used in the, uh, the key in. When I was first learning MicroStation, I was given a, a big thick book to read about MicroStation and a couple of the important key ins they mentioned were file fence or FF for sending fence contents to a new file. We already talked about deleting fence contents and I mentioned of course the select by attributes tool which is located on the edit menu select by attributes and how the power selector or element selection tool really does all of those functions so this is sort of not a necessary dialogue to learn about 
If you do want to find out more information about it, you can use Connect Advisor to find information about the Select by Attributes tool. No matter what method is used to create a selection set, the selection set is only temporary, whether it's a fence or selected by the Element Selector tool. MicroStation provides solutions to select a number of elements and group them for manipulation as a single element called a group. A group is a complex element whose component elements need not to be connected. A group is actually an unnamed cell. Unlike named cells, groups are not defined in cell libraries. We'll talk about cells more later. For this reason, groups are sometimes called orphan cells, which is a little sad. The user creates a group by selecting the elements and then from the MicroStation menu selects Edit Group. So for example, here's my selection set, Edit Group. Now these elements are a group and you see if I hover over them it says Cell Line. It's an unnamed cell. To ungroup them you simply go Edit, Ungroup, and now they are no longer in a group. Some other permanent groupings include levels. All elements on a level are a type of group, complex chains, shapes, groups, graphic groups, and named groups. There's a groups toolbox. You can access it by selecting the drop element tool, left pressing, and select open groups as toolbox. So the groups toolbox, the first tool on it is the drop element tool. And this is actually for dropping the complexity of groups. We'll talk about it in detail momentarily, but here's the create complex chain tool, the create complex shape tool, which would create a complex shape. The difference between a chain and a shape as far as complex goes is one is a linear element that is not a closed shape and one is a closed shape. There's create region which is, I sort of alluded to, flood fill. That's one of the options on that. We'll talk about that later. Um, add to graphic group, remove from graphic group, and group hole. We already alluded to this earlier in the, in the course, that you can have solid filled elements with holes in them. And this tool is used for taking elements that are solids and taking elements that are holes and making those holes part of the solid elements. In other words, uh, punching a hole through a solid element. Complex elements are created when a series of primitive elements like lines, line strings, arcs, or curves are joined together to form a single element. There are many advantages to using complex elements over primitive elements. For example, if a roadway center line has been created using lines and arcs, each item would have to be copied parallel individually if you were copying it to create edge of pavement, etc. This would result in many, many mouse clicks. If the center line were made into a complex chain before being copied, a single copy parallel operation would copy the entire center line with one mouse click, eh, maybe two mouse clicks. A complex object is always created on the active level. So if you've got a bunch of elements on one level, but your active level is something else, when you complex them, they will be on the active level. The resulting complex chain takes on the active level attributes regardless of the attributes of the component elements. A complex object is an element like any other and all of the standard manipulation modification tools apply. So everything we've learned so far will still apply to complex elements. Once a series of primitive objects has been converted to a complex object, they may be broken up into individual objects again using that drop element tool that we looked at. And I'm using the place line tool. And I'm just going to draw a line. And you'll notice that these are, again, individual line segments. They are by themselves not connected, just really, really adjacent to each other. I'm going to go to Create Complex Chain. There's two ways I can do this. I can do this manually and automatically. Manually involves me clicking every single line in the chain and now it's a complex chain. You saw how I moused over and it said complex chain. It's all one piece now. That's a complex chain. Well, what about this simplified geometry? Well, let's go back. I'm going to do an undo. I did an undo and now of course I've got my individual lines again. 
I'm going to do simplify geometry. Enter a data point and reset. Now you see it still is all one piece, but it is not a complex chain. It is a line string. So let's go ahead and look at the other method for creating a complex chain. That's automatic. And in the automatic mode, it'll find all the adjacent line segments automatically within a certain tolerance. So you can set your max gap. And now you see it is a complex chain. So what about this, this drop element tool? You saw the difference between complex chain and line string. So let's take a look at some of these objects we, or options. We do have a complex option. This would drop a complex chain back to line segments. If, however, we had a line string that wasn't a complex chain, this checkbox, line strings and shapes, would drop non-complex line strings and non-complex shapes down to line segments. This one's for complex chains and complex shapes. Uh, you can drop multi-lines, you can drop dimensions, we'll learn about dimensions later on, but dimensions of course you have line strings and then of course a, a, some annotation and whatnot. You can drop those, those would be all one complex element, you can drop those just down to basic geometry. Uh, multi-lines, you can drop multi-lines, shared cells to geometry or you can create a shared cell to a normal cell. So you can drop a cell or make a shared cell into a normal cell. We'll talk about the difference between shared cells and normal cells a little bit later. You can drop text so it becomes geometry. That can get real messy so be careful not to drop an entire paragraph. And application elements. This would apply to uh, things that, are, that contain civil data which we're not going to be learning about in this course but that is an option that has been added to the drop element when they did add the uh, civil functionality into V8i. Well, let's see how it works then. Dropping a complex and now you see it's individual line strings again. How about a complex shape? The complex shapes work the same way. I'm going to draw a irregular shape because why draw a regular shape? You'll notice I'm just using the place line tool. This is not going to actually connect the shape. There was no option to close the shape. So if we hover the element selector we'll see that is all individual lines. If I go to create complex shape, once again I have a manual and automatic option and a max gap setting. Simplified geometry makes it just a shape. When it's unchecked, it is a complex shape. And that allows you to select the difference between complex and shapes in the drop element tool. So you can kind of categorize your, your uh, elements there. Because we're going to get to this eventually, I'm going to go ahead and make this a solid, opaque shape. Now you see, as I hover over, it is a complex shape. If I turn off the fill, it's still a complex shape, it just doesn't have the fill. That was just a display attribute that I just toggled, it was the fill option. Okay, That is all there really is to the Create Complex Shape tool. And I'm going to skip over the create region for just a second and go to the group hole. So I'm going to draw with just my place line tool. And I can't see a thing, so let's turn off the fill. All right. You can see that is just individual line segments. Create complex shape. It's a hole. It is not opaque. I'm going to switch to the manual mode, show you the manual mode. It works exactly the same as the manual mode for the other. So click, 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 and data point. Let's mouse over. You can see that is now a complex shape. And let's go to this. Following the prompts, identify the solid element. I'm doing the solid element first. Now identify the whole element. This will allow us to select sequentially multiple whole elements. So if this was a piece of Swiss cheese, we could individually select the holes in the Swiss cheese. But there's only one. It's just a donut. And I'm going to accept, or you know, it says identify whole element. That's where you can sequentially go and select more whole elements. I'm going to go ahead and enter a data point to accept, and then reset to finish. Now you see it is a grouped whole. This is the solid part, this is the whole part. If I turn on the fill, you'll see 
there's a grouped whole. Well, no, so how do we drop that? Well, it's complex, so if we use the drop complex, it becomes two elements. You can see there's the hole there. Let's turn off the fill one more time because we'll probably end up using this later. All right, I've dropped these down to regular simplified geometry. And let's select the Create Region tool. This can be used like a flood fill. And in the flood fill, you just select your interior area, and that would become your region. I have it set for fill type opaque, fill color of 4, which is the bi-level color. You can keep the original element or convert it entirely. There's an option to ignore interior shapes, locate interior shapes, or identify alternating interior shapes if you had concentric shapes. This final option is locate interior text, and that means it will not fill the area that has like perhaps a label in it. If you're labeling a region, and you already have the region labeled, and the label is there, it'll ignore that, and it will not fill over it. I'm going to go ahead and just fill this whole region. Clicking here, it does identify the outline. Enter a data point to accept. Well, it didn't fill anything because my fills are off. There we are. Fill is on. I'm going to turn that off because I'm still working. So the Create Region tool, it can be used like a flood fill. You do have options to flood the entire area, to locate interior shapes, concentric, alternating interior shapes, and also to not flood fill the area that may have a text label in it. So that way you're not covering up the text label. I have this set for opaque with the bi-level fill color. You'll notice you can keep original, and I'll keep the original outline, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just convert it to a, a shape. Flood fill identifies the boundary element. Enter data point and reset. And if I turn off the fill, you can still see that this element is here. These are four lines. They're not a complex shape. So let's make them a complex shape. Let's make them no fill, flood fill again, and then, all right, but it's not a grouped hole yet. So let's use the grouped hole tool. Select the solid, then select the hole, enter data point, and now turn on the fill. There you are. If we look at the Create Region tool, it also has some other options. This tool is very similar to the Hatching and Cross Hatching and Pattern Hatching tool. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going over the nuances of it because we are going to cover a very, very similar tool again. But you can see that if I had two intersecting shapes, say like like a Venn diagram, this shape represents all things named Venn. This shape represents all things that are diagrams. This intersection right here is Venn diagrams. I always say that when I do this course. If you look at these other options, you have the option to create a region out of the union of these two elements. And in this case, it wants you to actually identify the element instead of flood filling. I'm, I'm clicking inside these areas, and it's not doing anything. But if I click here, it highlights it, click here, another highlight, enter a data point, and you've created a region. I didn't have any fill type on it. It has just combined those into one complex shape. Okay. Let's undo that, because if we drop it, it's just going to be two arcs. I'm going to undo, and let's look at the other options we have with the Create Region tool. It'll create an intersection where it'll just create a region out of this point where the two shapes intersect. That's why the keep original may be important to you. You may want to create this as a region, but still have your original circles. Because that's what it creates. It creates a complex shape out of the intersecting region. I'm going to undo again and create a difference. In this case, it's going to ask you to select one element first and the other second. And it subtracts the second element from the first. A little bit of a Pac-Man thing going on there. So that's the Create Region tool. It can be used to combine elements into complex shapes representing regions. Multiple elements can be combined together. You can flood fill regions. And that you can use it to create multiple intersecting areas to create a grouped whole. Exercise 9.1. This is on page 9-21. 
you're going to open up the MicroStation file utexrd01. This is in the utils folder, so let's go to File, Open, or if you're at your Open dialog, go up a level so you can see that you're in the Dataset folder. Scroll down, look for the utils folder. Open up the utils folder and locate utexrd01. That's the existing utilities. utexrd01 and open up that file. You'll notice the QC is running on the DGN there. Okay. Now, you'll notice this looks a lot like the data set we've been using, and that's because it's a file from the data set, but this is the UTEX file. It just has all the other files referenced into it. We're going to go to station 232, and we're going to locate the, uh, the buried cable line, or buried TV. So let's use the Find Replace Text tool. Type in 232 and hit find. And there we are, we're zoomed in. I know that the buried cable TV is going to be called, it's going to be, yeah, here we are, right here, cable TV existing. Now the, the level names have changed on the utilities, existing utilities, as of a little while ago, and this is a legacy level. We need to make sure this gets onto the correct level and the levels are based on the quality of the utility locate. Don't necessarily need to know what that means, but it's basically existing cable A, B, C, or D, depending on how it was located. So this is a good opportunity for us to put this on a different level, but what we're going to do first is we're going to drop the complex element. You see that it is a complex chain. So we're going to just have complex selected and drop that. Let's see, now it is individual lines. The next step is we're going to select the correct level which is going to be cable TV BUR for buried B. So let's see, there we are, CATV buried quality B under bar EP. That's now our active level. It is the correct line style and it is the correct level. And we're going to select create complex chain. We want to do this manually, and we do not want to simplify geometry. And be careful because we've got a little tiny line segment up here. We want to make sure there's not anything hiding down here. There does not appear to be. So clicking that one, and that one, and that one, zoom in and get that one. I'm using my wheel mouse to zoom in and out. Now that I've selected all of the elements that I want to select, I enter a data point and then hit reset. And you'll notice the line style shifted just a little bit, and that's because the line style is different. This is using a true type font, it has the extra B in there, it says BTV for buried TV. But we have managed to make this a complex chain again. Now we're going to create a complex shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our DSGN RD01. We've had this open and closed a couple of times, so it should be in our recent file list. So go ahead and select DSGN RD01 from the drop down file list. All right, we are in our proposed design. It looks like some levels may have been turned off because I'm not seeing any drive. Oh, no, there's some driveways. Okay. So using your wheel mouse or alternatively using the pan, locate a driveway. These driveways look like this. Right, and they are on the driveway level. I would say about 90% of the driveways in this design will work for this exercise. If you run into something weird, there is one driveway that is designed in such a manner that it does not work with this exercise. So locate a driveway. Alternatively, the one that's suggested by the exercise is there's a driveway at 286, between 286 and 287, stations 286 and 287. Um, it doesn't matter. All of these driveways work well with this exercise. So just locate a driveway. You're going to right click, right press to get your context menu and let's select turn off by element because there's a lot of stuff in the way and this is just turning off the levels. There's anything that's not driveway. Anything that'd be getting in the way. So now we have just the driveway lines right there. Another way we could have done that is to 
go to the display, level display, locate a driveway, make that our default level, and then select it all off. Okay. But instead I'm going to turn off by element and turn those lines off. If you think the text is going to be distracting, feel free to turn that off as well. So now we have a driveway. And in this exercise, we're going to use the Create Complex Shape tool. We're going to do this manually. And we're going to simplify geometry. We just want it to be a shape. We're going to make this solid and opaque. It's automatically going to select the number 7 color, which is our bi-level color. And while you're at it, make sure that you do have driveway set as your active level. I know I did that in the level display, but go back and, and double check and make sure that you've got that set as your active level. It's very important because, as you know, when we create complex shapes and complex chains using these tools, it's going to automatically put those elements on the active level, regardless of what level they start off on. Now this is a very important sequence of steps. You notice that there's no line here and there's no line here. So I want to demonstrate how this tool, even when in manual mode, as we select these lines, it's going to automatically go from one point to another to create the shape. Once I'm here, I enter a data point and then reset and my shape is created. Let's do that again. That is the driveway that does not work with this exercise. I still have my settings exactly the same. Selecting the driveway lines. Whoops, I missed. I hit something else. That's why it's important to uh, turn off levels. Let's reset. Hit the reset, and it selected the correct line. There we go. Again making a complex shape, data point, reset. Named groups. For greater flexibility still, named groups can be created, which allow a name to be given to each grouping of elements. Named groups can include elements from the active file and those from directly attached references. A named group can be created from the groups toolbox using the add to graphic group tool or from the MicroStation menu option, Utilities, Named Groups. This is the Named Group dialog. These are the buttons along the toolbar in the Named Group dialog. New Named Group, which creates a named group in the dialog, and although the new group has the default name, the user may change it. Show Named Group displays the element properties for all elements in the selected graphic group. Add Elements allows the user to add elements to the selected graphic group. Remove Elements allows the user to remove elements from the selected graphic group. Add Named Group to Parent forces the selected graphic group to become a child of another graphic group. Remove Group from Parent removes the graphic group from being a child of another graphic group. Delete Graphic Group deletes the named group. Select Elements in the named group selects all of the elements that belong in that named group. Set Display Set from selected named groups sets the contents of the selected graphic group as the display set. And Show Hierarchy shows the hierarchy window. Associate Elements. Under most circumstances, elements are static, and when an element is placed in a design, its position is simply defined by the design plane coordinates on which it lies. It retains that position in the design plane until moved with an element manipulation tool. One exception to this rule is association, in which an element's position in the design plane is defined in relation to another element. When the other element is moved, the associated element moves with it. For example, dimension elements can be associated with the elements whose dimensions they display. These dimensions update when the dimensions of the elements which they are associated with change. The types of elements that can be associated with other elements are dimensions, multi-lines, normal cells, 
shared cells, and tags. The association is made when the dimension, multi-line, cell, or tag is placed. We will discuss dimensions a little bit later on in this course, but first let's do exercise 9.2, creating groups. We're going to start out creating an unnamed group. So open the microstation file utexrdo1. This file is located in the utils folder of our data set. Since we opened it already, it should be in the recent files list. We are now in the utexrdo1 file. The first step is to use the Edit Finder Place Text tool to locate station 257. Next, from the main task, select the Element Selection tool if it has not already been selected and open the Level tab. We're going to locate the level Telephone Buried Under Bar EP. And because that is a legacy level, we're going to have to turn off the level filter because it's filtering that level out. So select None. Scroll down again. All right, we've selected all of the buried telephone. Next, let's select Telephone Buried B under bar EP as our active level. Now you see, because we had that selected, it actually changed the level of all the selected items. That's another way to change the level that the elements are on. Now, from the MicroStation menu, select Edit Group. Hover the cursor over one of the elements from the selection set and notice that all the elements in the group highlight at the same time. and you'll see that they are an unnamed cell. Select one of the elements of the group and drag it to the right. You could use the Move tool, but just for this demonstration, select and drag. You'll notice that all the elements are now part of a group and move together. Select Edit, Undo Drag Selection, or hit Control z to undo this operation. Select the newly created group from the previous exercise and select from the MicroStation menu Edit Ungroup. Now you'll see they are now individual elements. For this next exercise we'll be continuing in the Utex RDO1 file leaving all active element attributes set. From the Group Toolbox select Add to Graphic Group. From the Add to Graphic Group dialog, select Create New Named Group. Key in the name Underground and a description. Check the box for Select All Members when any member is selected to enable Selectable for the named group. Click OK. The Add to Graphic Group tool settings populates with a newly created named group. Close the Add to Graphic Group tool settings and the Groups toolbox. Continuing within the same MicroStation file, from the Primary toolbox located at the top of the Application window, select the Key In tool. If you do not see the Key In tool, right-click and enable that tool. Alternatively, select Utilities Key In to open the Key In browser. Key In Reference Display Off All. This turns off all of the reference files. All the elements we see on the screen are in the active file. Now we'll select the elements to be grouped. You can dismiss the key in browser and from the selector tool select CATV 
underbar EP. All the elements on the CATV underbar EP level have been selected. Now access the named group dialog from Utilities, Named Groups. From the Named Groups dialog, select New Named Group, calling it Television. Select the Add Elements icon to add the graphic group and enter a data point to accept. You'll see now there are seven elements in the Television Named Group. We're going to repeat these steps with sanitary sewer and electric. See the electric is on power buried conduit under bar EP. That as well. And unselect cable TV. So we've selected a number of electric we're going to create a new group, call it electric, and hit add elements. Enter data point to accept, and now you see there's 359 elements in the electric. Let's do sanitary sewer. Unselect. And all the elements we're looking for are on sewer FM under bar EP. Create a new graphic group. Oops, oops, my caps lock is not on. And select Add Elements. You'll see now, after we enter a data point, there are 73 elements 